Before the advent of streaming music giving me any song and album or playlist I want on demand, there were CDs and tapes. The photos you will see in this video are photos of my cassette tape collection. I'll be uploading photos of my CD collection separately and linking to that video in the description below. I contemplated combining both, but I didn't want this video to end up too long. I photographed all the CDs and cassettes and labeled and edited the photos from April 12 to April 16, 2020 during my COVID-19 quarantine lockdown here in the Philippines. These media, the tapes and the CDs were such a huge part of my formative years. Photographing them brought such a huge wave of nostalgia. Many of the albums represented a period of time in the life of anyone of my generation where there was so much possibility and potential, where everything was so malleable, everything was in flux, and the sky was the limit. I am not one of those middle-aged curmudgeons firmly stuck in a nostalgic past who refuse to listen to any album released after they turned 25 and decry new music as just noisy garbage. Music is still a big part of my life and I still seek out new music. I don't find new music any worse than old music and in fact a few of the 90s and early 2000s pop songs I used to love didn't have lyrics that aged well at all, political correctness wise. Although granted, they were also written when the artists were younger, when shock value was a big part of the appeal of the lyrics and presentation. Anyway, back to new music. I still seek out new stuff. I also have my own favorites, and who knows, in 15 to 20 years, I may make a video with screenshots of my favorite songs and albums of my 30s from the Spotify era. There's something about these albums I present to you now, though. Not that they're such musical groundbreakers or artistic masterpieces that make them more sentimental or and have a stronger emotional connection to me than the amazing new music that I've discovered as a creaking old person in my 30s. And yes, a lot of it have to do with a specific moment in time when I discovered them and started listening to them. And also each album also bookmarked and bookended intense periods of growth as a young adult. I was born in 1981, a very basic time without all these sound clouds and Spotify's and million little subgenres and musical fiefdoms youths have now, with their own little idols that don't necessarily cross over with other youth groups. Back then, one can argue that tastes were almost flat in a way, that while there were alternative and indie groups, as commercially available pop music available to us here in our little corner of Southeast Asia and the Philippines went, we only had these limited, mostly chart toppers from commercial record labels. And in a way, it's easier for us Gen Xers to look back on and wax nostalgic about when listening to a modern streaming playlist of songs from that era of high school and college as we almost all universally listen to nearly the same groups and bands. I also love all the liner art that came with the CDs and cassette tapes. Some are reproductions of drawings, a few were handwritten lyrics, and there were many, many great photographs that I didn't appreciate back then. But looking back now as I photographed these photographs, how recursive, haha. I realized these liner notes themselves are an art form distinct from the music itself, not just decoration or extras. So many albums had generous pages, glossy paper. I didn't really look through all the photos until now when I was choosing which pages to photograph. Those liner notes were some great art. There was also an element of mild narcissistic egotism back then collecting music as the access was not as quote unquote democratic as now with all these SoundClouds and Spotify's and Deezer's and what have you. You had to know of them, hunt them down in various stores, etc. Kind of like when kids collected baseball and basketball cards. To be cool was to actually own a physical copy of the album. A lot of kids and young adults' personalities back then, embarrassingly mine partially too, were tied up in the cool media they owned and chose to listen to or watch. But I don't think my wrist can handle another round of cataloging my VHS collection. It's risible now at nearly 40, during a four-day sprint photographing these climate change contributing plastic artifacts of the 1990s and 2000s in the middle of a pandemic, how much importance we all placed in these objects back then. How important it all seemed back then, when a lot of our lives revolved around commercially produced pop culture, haha. <laughs> I'll be letting the photograph stay on screen for around 2 seconds each before flashing to the next. I won't be typing labels of artists and album names in the photographs anymore, I can't handle any more eye strain and wrist strain. I will be uploading the photos online though, I'll link to the photo album in the description below. 
hope you enjoyed this video of my cassette tape collection and be sure to check out my other video in my CD collection, link below. Please thumb up this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to be updated when I upload again. See you next video!